Apple at the core, its core value, is that we believe that people with passion can change the world for the better. That's what we believe. And that those people that are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones that actually do. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Personal Growth Alchemy. And today we're talking about one of my favorite topics, which is Steve Jobs and one of the most powerful tools in his creative arsenal. So Steve was infamous and known in the technology community and by many of his coworkers as having something called a reality distortion field. The people around him described it as a mix of charisma, bravado, magnetism, that things that they previously believed weren't possible actually were possible. In 2001, we introduced the first iPod. And it didn't just it didn't just change the way we all listen to music. It changed the entire music industry. One of the classic examples of this is back in 2007 when Steve was getting ready to launch what would become the the revolutionary first iPhone. And when him and Johnny Ives were in the design studio and looking at the final prototypes that they were getting ready to go into production, Steve realized in that moment that there was one fatal flaw with these phones, and it happened to be the screen. They realized that glass was the only way to make this iPhone work. So they found a company called Corning Glass. But when Steve told him that they were on a six month timeline, um, Wendell, the CEO, basically said that's impossible. Um, and on the records and in Steve Jobs biography, he's recorded as saying, don't be afraid. You can do this. Sure enough, when it comes time to debut the iPhone on stage, um, Corning Glass had produced enough for the first couple million copies that Apple would go on to sell. So the main thing that makes the reality distortion field so effective is the principle that possibility is constrained by our belief. And what I mean by that is that what you think you're capable of accomplishing or not accomplishing is true either way, depending on your belief. If you believe that you're capable of doing something, um, you'll find a way to make it happen. And the classic example of this is in the four minute mile, which um, for decades in the early 1900s, when running became a, a more prominent sport, people believed that it was impossible to break the four minute time mark for a mile run um, until finally in the 1950s, somebody broke that four minute mile record for the first time. And all of a sudden, within a year, multiple people had broken that same record, like a, a dam finally breaking through in, in the belief system of the human subconscious. And over the last 50 years, thousands of people have broken this four minute mile record. So the interesting thing is that according to Steve Jobs' biography, Steve actually learned the reality distortion field. It wasn't something that he had innately. Um, how do you actually go about using the reality distortion field and learning how to use it and, and bringing it into your own life? So the first thing I would say here, as in a lot of my advice, is always when you're learning something new, start small and, and build your confidence and show yourself over time that you're, you're capable of unlocking these new possibilities. If you don't believe it, other people around you aren't going to believe it. So if you're, you have an idea for a startup company, but you're not really sure whether it's going to be successful, 
other people are going to have a lot of doubt as well. So for you to start selling and convincing others to join your team and to buy your product, you have to have that deep sense of belief in it first. And to do that, one of my techniques is I start asking little questions. So, well, what, what would it look like if we had a thousand customers? What would, what would this product look like? What would my ideal team look like? And, and just getting in this state of exploring the possible and, and getting clear in my head around what's possible. And then if you experience any doubt of, well, I'm not sure if I can do that, I, I don't know if I can recruit a team or if people are gonna wanna lead me, um, I like to use examples of other people that I know that have done it before. Find someone in your environment, maybe someone you know on social media and follow, and just remind yourself, like, if they can do it, then I can do it. If they can do it, it means it's possible. So that means I can do it. And if you remind yourself of that enough, you'll start to, to build confidence and build that sense of belief in your idea. And step three in this process is delivering with confidence. You can think about it like playing a musical instrument. Um, like I play guitar, for example. And when you play a certain chord, if you're not if you don't have your fingers positioned properly across the different strings and hitting the right notes and you strum, it's going to create a dissonant sound. But when you have everything tuned and you've practiced, then there's a, a sound of, of resonance and harmony. And it's the same thing with using your own reality distortion field and convincing others of your idea. You have to practice hitting those notes using your tone, your voice, and how you deliver information to convey confidence and to sell other people on your idea. So for I'll show you in two ways. The first one is monotone. And let's say I haven't practiced my delivery. So it's possible for you to develop your own reality distortion field if you just practice. Now let's do that again, but let's add a sense of tonality, of confidence and inspiration into the delivery. So I know that it's possible for you, if you practice, to develop your own reality distortion field and convince others to buy into your idea in a powerful way. And those little things, those notes that you hit are often the, the game changers, the difference makers to whether or not you are able to convince and get others to resonate and buy into your idea. A gentle reminder to use this powerful technique to create positive change in your life, to create positive change for others and in the world. Um, because I really do believe that we can train ourselves to unlock these new possibilities and start to live the dream life. So thank you for tuning in and more to come on this channel of Personal Growth Alchemy. Have a beautiful day and I'll talk to you soon.